The Forest Rights Act was enacted in 2006 to correct a historical injustice against Adivasis and other forest dwelling populations of the country by which they were turned encroachers on their own lands. Instead, the authority to manage and protect forests was vested in the forest department, which was not responsible for the protection of forests per se, but for their diversion for commercial purposes. Between 1980 to 2016, the forest department has been responsible for the diversion of more than one and a half million hectares of forests belonging to the forest dwellers for commercial purposes. The Forest Rights Act was enacted to fulfill the constitutional mandate under Article 244 and the fifth schedule of the Constitution, by which the authority to protect and manage forests was transferred from the state through the forest department to the Gram Sabhas themselves. And since then, although the implementation of the Act has been low, Gram Sabhas have successfully challenged forest destruction through various actors, um, whether it be for commercial plantations, for timber felling, or for dams and displacement. Since 2014, however, we have seen a systematic dismantling of the democratic forest governance regime put in place by the Forest Rights Act. The one of the first measures taken by the present government was to exempt the consent of Gram Sabhas from forest diversion in two cases, one for linear projects and second for prospecting of minerals which together constitute almost 50% of the overall forest diversion across the country. The second measure was the enactment of the Compensatory Afforestation Fund Act and Rules. At the time of its enactment in Parliament, the former Minister of Environment and Forest had given an assurance to the Rajya Sabha that the Act would be implemented only through the full and only through the free and informed consent of the Gram Sabhas, such that the 70,000 crores that have been accumulated as compensatory afforestation funds are only deployed for forest protection activities with the consent of the Gram Sabhas. However, this has turned into a tool for massive land, gra land grab of Adivasi lands by the Forest Department without their consultation or consent at all. The present government has continued its policy of relentless land grab, illegal land grab through the creation of land banks across uh, large fifth schedule areas, through attempted amendments to the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act, through militarization in areas where the Gram Sabhas have been protesting strongly against such land grab, and most recently by amendments to the, by proposed amendments to the Indian Forest Act by which now the Forest Department will be vested with abnormal and illegal powers of detention, of search and seizure, of, um, uh, of undertaking even judicial functions without any fair hearing, to the extent of even arming them and shooting on sight, uh, with complete impunity from any kind of accountability for human rights violations and atrocities. It is important at this stage to prevent further escalating conflict and to prevent further environmental destruction, that this systematic dilution of democratic forest government governance in the country be put a stop to, that the authority of the Gram Sabhas be respected. And that's why uh, that is a question for the present government to address as it goes to the polls going forward.